Foo Fighters were German directed energy weapons made by searchlight continuous wave radar sets ionizing the atmosphere into glowing balls of plasma. So today let's look at the history of Foo Fighters. Hey and welcome back. Today radar is all a big lie. Well, it does exist, but it didn't come into existence exactly as you were told. <laughs> In our history books and research papers, <laughs> excuse my papers, we're all told that Wilkins and Robert Watson Watt in a field in the Daventry experiment had a radar transmitter and saw an airplane in the sky and then phoned the Minister of Defence to say, I've invented a way of radio... No, it didn't work like that. Let me tell you today what I now think is the true story about the birth of radar. It actually was invented by a German, Heinrich Hertz, in 1888. He saw that RF, or radio frequencies, are reflected by a metallic object, like light reflecting off a mirror, was his quote in German. But nice Mr. Hertz didn't go on to build a radar set, he opened a car hire company. No, he didn't. <laughs> Spool forward to the 19... 20s. Now, there's a large British corporation called the BBC. I used to work there. Top place. And in the 1920s, they transmitted radio. But they didn't actually have their own transmitter. The BBC made the programmes and then the post office transmitted them from this big aerial and transmitter at Daventry in central England. But the BBC noticed that they got letters. Dear Auntie BBC, sometimes your program is a bit vague and then it comes and goes. What's going on? So the BBC asked the GPO, why are some of our listeners having reception difficulty? And of course the GPO looked at it and they said, Strange thing is, your radio programs seem to be affected by these newfangled aircraft that are flying around our transmitting station in Daventry. It's as if the signal is reflecting back off the metal aircraft, causing Mrs. H to get a weak radio signal when the plane flies through the transmission. And they wrote a technical report back to the BBC and caused the effect wobble and said there's nothing we can do about it aha so this wobble was known by the bbc and the gpo which is part of the british government so when robert watson watt was tasked with looking at what you could do with radios he knew about Hertz and reflected RF frequencies, and he knew about the BBC's wobble. So that's what was really going on with Watson Watt and Wilkins in a field at the aptly named Daventry Experiment, because Robert Watson Watt and Wilkins did not have a radar. They did not even have a transmitter. They were using the GPO transmitter at Daventry. The BBC kindly put out a test signal. And all they had in their field was a radio set listening to the test signal. But they got the airman Street to fly an aircraft through the signal as it disseminated from Daventry. And with their radio set and an oscilloscope, they saw when the aircraft went into the signal. And it went, er, woof. And it made a wobble. 
But what they then noticed was brilliant. As the aircraft flew along, the wobble moved. Whoa! So they could actually have a visual tracking of when the BBC's test signal transmitted by the GPO was attenuated, made smaller, wobbled, when it reflected off the metal airplane. The birth of radar. But Robert Watson Wharton Wilkins didn't really invent radar in Britain. They saw the effect of the wobble on the BBC's broadcast. The real, real inventor of radar was Ukrainian. In a research station in Ukraine, all the top scientists were looking at RF frequencies and radar. That's really how it came about. And that technology sadly got transferred to the Germans, those nice people beginning with the letter N that I can't mention on YouTube, took it on and built something called CW radar. CW stands for Continuous Wave radar and it's super powerful while britain was sending out little poof, poof, pea shooter pulses those german chaps had a searchlight beam <laughs> which they sent up into the sky and mentored knobs to try and find aircraft the power involved was enormous. Many of them were linked together. They had five or six of these giant mattress antennas all linked together, all putting out vast amounts of RF frequency in a searchlight, looking for planes in the sky. There was one radar on the outskirts of Berlin that was so powerful, it illuminated the night. Well, it didn't really. Oh, I'm exaggerating. I'm being over-enthusiastic, so I'm in calm down. But actually it did, in a strange way. Continuous wave radar does light up the night sky because it produces plasma. The German style radar used sheer power and energy to bounce off things in the sky. While in Britain and America we were looking for pulses in higher frequencies, magnetrons making microwaves bouncing off and coming back where you'd send out a signal, stop it and look for a return, the Germans just went Brrr. And that was actually an early directed energy weapon. The Germans knew that a searchlight beam of directed energy could knock out an airplane's electronics. And in two German laboratories, one based in Berlin and one in Dresden, they experimented with directed energy weapons, firing at allied planes to knock out their motors. And some of the times it worked. Allied planes flying over or near both Berlin and the Dresden lab reported strange things. Magnetic compasses going wild, radios failing, and this was all reported back to the Ministry of Defence in Britain. And at the same time, something really strange was seen in the sky. Let me paint you a picture. Thousands of Allied bombers all flying over Germany with hundreds of airmen all looking out into the distance in case a German fighter was going to come and blow them out of the sky. Eyes in the sky looking for things that nobody had ever seen before. And what did they see? Foo Fighters. Illuminated balls of light high up in the air that seemed to be under intelligent control. As the bombers flew, the balls slowly tracked their path. What was going on? The directed energy weapons and now these Foo Fighters that were seen by Allied aircrew went straight to the top and Churchill wanted answers. He was so worried it could be a new German vengeance weapon that he didn't know about. So where did the Americans and the British go first at the end of World War II? To the Berlin and Dresden radio laboratories and took it home to places like Bordsea Manor, where German directed energy weapons and the production of plasma Foo Fighters were weaponized for Britain and America. 
The rest is history, because now the truth is out there.